let the church say yes. In Memphis, Tennessee, and from auditoriums across America, we present the Bountiful Blessings broadcast with Bishop G.E. Patterson. Our mission is to reach the universe of mankind with the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, admonishing them to receive the gift of his spirit, to lift and nurture the total man as we expectantly await the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I command you to be healed, be delivered, be set free. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercies endure it forever. I am Elder Michael Scruggs, and as the late evangelist Louise Patterson would say, coming to you live from the beautiful city of Memphis, Tennessee. On behalf of the Board of Bountiful Blessings and the employees, thank you for your continued support of this ministry. It was Evangelist Louise Patterson and Bishop G.E. Patterson's wish that the ministry will continue to thrive, and with your support, we're doing just that. We would also like to take the time to welcome all of the Church of God in Christ delegates to Memphis, Tennessee for the 115th Holy Convocation. We pray that you will have a great time and it will be spirit-filled. Now join us for today's broadcast, Already in Progress. And isn't it wonderful to have his promise to be with us? through the storm, through the rain, whatever happens in life, his promise is, Lo, I am with you always. God, we want to thank you today for that promise. For since I gave to Jesus my poor broken heart, he never has left me alone. I want to thank you, Lord, for how you're always there. And we thank you that we know you're here right now. We ask that you would anoint these lips of clay, allow us to speak as an oracle of Christ, hide us behind your glorious cross, and cover us with your precious blood that no flesh would glory in your sight. And we give you praise, glory, and honor through Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. Give the Lord praise. I want you to turn with me at this time to the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. And we want to look at the latter portion of chapter 38. The latter portion of chapter 38. If you would look with me to verses 18 through 20 and just allow your Bibles to remain open in this book. Isaiah chapter 38, verse 18, 19, and 20. Let's read aloud together. For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee, they that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. The living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The father to the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore, we will sing my songs to the stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. All right, we'll stop at that point. This is the, God bless you. In fact, I want to talk to you just for a few minutes today from this theme. You have a lifelong duty to praise the Lord. Hello. Not just when you feel good, but as long as you're alive. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, you have a lifelong duty to praise the Lord. 
Now, if that truth would just be grasped by every so-called Christian, every saint, there would not be a church anywhere where people would be sitting around with long faces looking everybody else up and down from head to toe trying to decide whether we like the singer before we get with the song whether we like the preacher before we say amen we would understand from the very beginning that when I walk through the door of the sanctuary of the Lord that I must enter his gates with thanksgiving come into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name doesn't matter what anybody have done to you you've got a right to bless his name no matter what's going on in your life you have an obligation to give him praise amen oh you know but I can remember as a youngster growing up and as I said you all know I just celebrated my 60th birthday and uh, when I first discovered I was in the world I was already in the Church of God in Christ because I was born there in the little house in Humboldt, Tennessee, right next door to the Church of God in Christ that my daddy pastored. So before I knew I was in the world, I was in church. And I've seen uh, the changes we have gone through, uh, where, you know, gone through that time where didn't nobody dance and didn't nobody do anything until they felt like the Lord had quickened them. And if I don't feel it, I don't move. But uh, we wouldn't have much church if the musicians had to feel the spirit before they play. Amen. Because now I've got, I've got a lot of musicians on salary, and I don't care how they feel. I want them to play when I need some music. <laughs> And, and we get up and we testify and we do everything. But the Bible told us praising on the string instruments and organ. And it goes on and gives us this list of instruments and let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And it even said praise him in the dance. And I see folk come to church who used to dance. Uh, they, they would wait for something like uh, New Year's Eve because uh, they leave the party and go to the breakfast dance and dance until daylight and then they come to church and sit there well honey why you don't ever well I I'm waiting for the Lord to give me a dance I mean you you've had a dance for 35 40 years he doesn't have to give you another dance you don't have to change steps you just change partners you used to dance with the devil as your partner but now that you're saved hallelujah if i don't feel it i'll just dance till i feel it glory to god and how long will i continue to give him praise as long as i live hear what he said here he says the grave cannot praise thee Death cannot celebrate thee. But he comes on down to verse 19 and says it twice. The living, who? The living. <laughs> Glory to God, he shall praise thee. You just ought to touch somebody and ask them, are you living? Well, then you got a right to praise him. Hey, thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And let, let me just for a few minutes look at why this 
King Hezekiah was so exuberant about this thing of praising God. If you look at the beginning of this chapter 38, it says, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. So you got to understand that this man was excited and wanted to praise God because the beginning of this chapter, he is sick, and in the midst of his sickness, a true prophet of God walked into his room and told him, make sure you've got your will signed. If you've got some business that's not settled, get it straight. Set your house in order. Uh, he wasn't talking about cleaning up and sweeping around the material house. He is talking about put your business in shape because your life has run its course. You've got to die. Not only does your sickness say you've got to die, God said you're going to die. And when this man got that uh, particular word served to him, and you got to understand, let, let, me, let me back up a little bit further here. You need to read chapters 36 and 37 because it begins, first of all, with that which became such a drain on King Hezekiah. And you can say what you want to. Whenever you come out of great conflict, you need healing. If you are not physically sick, you need inner healing. You need emotional healing. And you'll see kind of what had happened to him when you read chapters 36 and 37. Because Sennacherib, the king of the great Assyrian empire, had sent word to Hezekiah by his general Rabshakeh. Uh, Rabshakeh is the name that is used here in the scripture. Some theologians argue that Rabshakeh was not actually his name, but it was the title of the office that he held, that he was either a governor or he was some person high up uh, in the administration of this king of Assyria, Sennacherib. But whether Rabshakeh was his name or his title, he was the kind of person who was well-schooled in psychological warfare because he sent word to Hezekiah. And sometimes that's what the devil does. Many times he doesn't actually physically attack you, but he sends words into your spirit. He lets you hear things that will unnerve you. And, and some things that are in this narrative, I wouldn't even read it. Let you read it for yourself. When they talked about what they were going to do to the men of Israel and, and that you're just not going to be able to stand up against mighty Assyria. And Rabshakeh not only spoke in the language of Assyria, but he spoke in the language that the Jewish people understood to get them unnerved. And then uh, Sennacherib the king had written a threatening letter to Hezekiah and gave that letter to Rabshakeh, said make sure it gets into the hands of Hezekiah, the king of Israel. And when Hezekiah got the letter where this man was talking about what he was going to do to Israel, not only did Sennacherib make a mistake by threatening Israel, but he tried to defame Israel's God. All of the other nations, their God was no match for mighty Assyria, so how do you think your God can withstand? And when Hezekiah read that thing, 
where the man not only was reproaching Israel, but reproaching Israel's God. Hezekiah said, I see something in here. This ain't my mail, this is God's mail. He took that letter and spread it out on the altar. And in other words, said, God, this isn't my mail, this is your mail. You say what you want to. When things get to you, sometimes you got to learn how to tell God it's not my mail. Yeah, yeah, they, they say that, that I'm, I'm getting laid off and, and I don't have enough money to pay these bills. Uh, Lord, here is a reminder that I got in the mail the other day. I'm going to leave that one with you. Went to the doctor and the doctor gave me a bad report. I'm going to leave that one with you. Sometimes you got to learn how to take the troubles of this life and spread it on the altar in prayer and tell God it's not my mail. When Hezekiah got through spreading that letter on the altar before God. Oh, hallelujah. But verse 2 of chapter 38 says, Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall. You've been looking at friends. You know, you know how we are. You got friends in high places. Yeah, yeah, I can contact the mayor. I can contact the governor. I've got rapport with the president. I, I, I've got some good friends. I can reach the people uh, who have great financial empires. But touch somebody and tell them, it's time for you to quit looking to them and turn your face to the wall. Oh, yeah, when you, when you face the wall. You're not looking for help from material means when you face the wall. You're not looking for political favors when you face the wall. You're not trying to get a loan from men when you face the wall. Uh, you've given up on family relationship when you face the wall. You're saying, I don't want to see nobody but my invisible God. I'm just going to have a little talk with Jesus. I'm going to tell him all about my struggle. Maybe weak, but he will hear my faintest cry. And then he's going to answer by and by. Yeah, when I feel a little prayer wheel turning, I know that a little fire's burning. And I don't have no understanding about how it happens but just a little talk with Jesus will make everything all right you ought to tell somebody I had a talk with Jesus and it's all right now hey. he turned his face to the wall and the Bible said, and prayed unto God. Now look at the way his prayer went, beginning of verse 3. He said, remember. In other words, he didn't pray one of those panic-stricken prayers. Now, now, now Lord, I, I, I know I haven't been doing right. I haven't been going to church. I haven't been paying my tithes. I haven't been treating folk right. Some folk have been walking by and haven't spoke to them. And, and been lying on a few folk and but but now Lord if if you let me out of this then I will do that but here was a man that said before I got sick I treated folk right before I got sick I was faithful to you so he said Lord remember I'm not going to talk about what I will do if you raise me up. But what I want you to do is remember what I've already done. Remember that my life has already been an example for people to know that God is a true God. You ought to touch somebody and tell them your faithfulness will pay off after a while. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. He said, Lord, I want you to remember, I beseech thee how I have walked 
before thee in truth and with a pure heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And somehow in the midst of his prayer, the Bible said he began to weep and he wept sore. But what happened? Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, now the word of the Lord had already came through Isaiah. It had come through him saying, you got to die. You can't live. But when the man stopped praying, the prayer went immediately from the wall up to heaven. And God sent the word to the gate before Isaiah could get out of the gate and said, go back. I know I told him he had to die, but go back. I told him his time was out, but go back and tell him that I've reversed the sentence and I'm going to give him 15 more years. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody I'm talking to today, you feel like your time is out. The devil told you it's over. But I hear God saying, because you still love me, because you are serving me, because you yet want to work for me, I'm going to give you more time. Yeah, more time to give him the glory, more time to praise his name. I'm going to close now. But he said, Lord, if you're going to give me some time, how am I going to know that? I don't want to walk out of here talking about I got more time and then fall dead in the street. God said, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you a sign. Hallelujah. Ahaz had built a sundial that reflected on the steps, yes. glory to God, that when you saw the shadow descending down the steps, you could tell by where the shadow stopped, how many hours were left in the day. God said, I want you to stand there and look at the sundial of Ahaz and watch it. The sun has descended and you know where the shadow ought to be, but I'm going to back it up 10 degrees, letting you know that if it was full in the evening, I'm going to let the shadow reflect that it's only about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, showing you that since there's more time on the sundial, there's more time in your life. Yay! I don't know what kind of sign God is going to give you. I preached a few months ago about Samson, whose life seemingly was over when they put out his eyes and wrapped him up, tied up his hands and feet. He was bound and he was blind and he had to grind in the mill. But the Bible said, how be it? The hair of his head began to grow again. And that Sunday I preached, I feel my hair growing. Uh, and a lot of folk have been saying to me, Bishop, I don't know why you're wearing your hair a little longer. But I decided I was going to let that be my symbol. That it ain't over until it's over. You ought to touch somebody and say it ain't over until it's over. Listen, you He who was wounded for my transgression 
bruised for my iniquity. How he loved me so that he died on the cross, not for anything that he did, but for my sins. And we may as well be honest, since we've been saved, all of us have done some things we didn't have no business, or some things we should have done and didn't do. And he keeps on loving me right on. Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had get breaking it and blessed it, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. And in the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye in remembrance of me. As often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do so the Lord's death till he come. Shall we drink of our Lord's shed blood? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. To order, call 1-800-544-3571 or log on to www.beblessed.org or you can write us at Post Office Box 1, Memphis, Tennessee 38101. Thank you for tuning in to the Bountiful Blessings broadcast with Bishop G. E. Patterson. It's a rare love story of two precious pearls that through their life of service to God created a strand of pearls. That strand is seen throughout the pages of this book. Call 1-800-544-3571. That's 1-800-544-3571 to find out how you can get your copy of this book today. Or you can go to our website.